host, Cynthia Thompson. I want to ask you all a question out there. Have you ever wondered who takes care of our water? We all take it for granted when we turn on that faucet that it's going to be clean and it's going to run for us every day. Well, you're in luck today. I have two people here that's going to share with us how we take care of the water here in the city of Charlotte. But I'm going to let them introduce themselves to you. Let's start with you, sir. Uh, my name is Barry Gullett, and uh -huh. I have the, the pleasure and the honor, to, honor of being the director of the Charlotte Mecklenburg Utility Department. Huh, and? And I'm Regina Dobson Kauser, and I have the pleasure of being the continuous improvement officer for the Charlotte Mecklenburg Utility Department. Thank you so much for joining me today. You know, before I start with all these questions that I have for you, let me just ask you a few background questions about the Charlotte Mecklenburg Utilities Department, about how many customers do you service here in the Charlotte area? We serve about a million people. Uh -huh. We serve the pretty much the whole population of Charlotte and Mecklenburg County, the towns, the six other towns in Mecklenburg County, plus huh. the 100,000 plus people that drive into Charlotte every day that work and play and come to visit to, uh, to go to football games and uh -huh. basketball games. So we serve all of those folks. It's a lot of people with all those people. About how many employees do you have to take care of those people? We have 760 employees in the utility department uh -huh. and we do everything with water from taking it from the river, cleaning it up, delivering it to the customer, recovering it from when the customer's finished with it, taking it back to a wastewater treatment uh -huh. plant, cleaning it up there and returning it to the environment better than it was when we took it out. That's a lot of work. No wonder you need so many people to help you. <laughs> so I want to ask you, this may sound like a stupid question, but where does our water source come from? It just doesn't come from the air. Sometimes it does. Yeah, sometimes it does. <laughs> it has this year. A lot of it has come from the air this year. Uh, our, we get our water from the Catawba River. Uh -huh. And the Catawba River is about 225 miles long. It starts up in the mountains of North Carolina near, near Linville. Mm -hmm. uh, and goes into South Carolina where it joins with several other rivers, changes names, and eventually winds up in the Atlantic Ocean in Charleston. Mm -hmm. huh. so, so there are 11 impoundments or reservoirs on the Catawba River and we uh -huh. get water from two of those in Charlotte. About 80% of our water comes from Mountain Island Lake. Uh -huh. A lot of people don't even know Mountain Island Lake exists. It's pretty much just a wide spot in the river, but it's right between Lake Wiley and Lake Norman. And so then the other 20% of uh -huh. our water does come from Lake Norman uh -huh. and generally serves the folks in the northern end of the county. That's a lot, but you know, with so much water in the lakes, is there any chance, any chance we'll ever run out? Absolutely there is. Really? Mm -hmm. Yes. And that is becoming more and more of a concern. It wasn't mm -hmm. too many years ago that we really thought we would not run out. Uh -huh. We thought that the Catawba River was an endless supply of water. And we went through several droughts and we learned uh, that, that we were wrong. Mm -hmm. And that in fact, if we continue to use water the way we have used it in the past, and the area continues to grow, there's a risk that we could reach the capacity of our water supply by the year 2050, 2060, something uh -huh. in that time frame. And so we've been working on a plan to make it last longer. Uh -huh. Because when we say run out of water, it doesn't mean that you turn the faucet on and nothing comes out. Yeah. What it means is, is that we can't connect any new customers, that we will have reached the capacity of the river to serve new customers and new uh -huh. connections. And that wouldn't be just in Charlotte, that would be in the whole entire Catawba River Basin. Mm -hmm. So it would mean no new houses, no new schools, no uh -huh. new hotels, no new businesses, anywhere from, uh, from north of, of Morganton all the way down uh, to, to Camden, South Carolina, that, in that whole river basin. So it's a very serious issue and one that is going to take a lot of planning to, 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 to fix. Yeah, we, we commissioned a report called the Safe Yield Report uh -huh. um, that we're pretty proud of and happy with just to address that. And so that's an excellent question that you ask us. Huh. Yeah. The other thing that's important about that is, is that there are, there are actually 18 cities that take water out of the Catawba River directly and a lot of other cities that take water out of the tributaries to the Catawba River, the smaller streams. But those 18 cities, along with Duke Energy, mm -hmm. have joined together to form a nonprofit corporation. And the purpose of that nonprofit corporation is to find ways to extend the usefulness of the river uh -huh. and, and preserve the ecological and environmental aspects uh -huh. of it as well. And so that group has, um, it, it's, a, it's actually a 
501c3 corporation, nonprofit group, uh -huh. and uh, we all pay dues into it, and we use those dues and leverage those dues to do to do these projects. And we're finishing up right now a water supply master plan for the whole basin. Uh -huh. This will be the first time there's ever been one completed for the whole basin, and it will lay out a plan of things that the cities and the customers and the residents of our basin uh, and area need to do over the next 50 years to make that water supply last longer. And in mm -hmm. fact, we believe that um, we believe there are things that we can do that will push it well into the next century. So, huh. so it will. It, it's a living plan; has to be updated periodically uh -huh. and reviewed. But we believe there are things that can be done to to make it last longer. So there's no way we'll run out. N that's not no, true. Yeah. If, we don't, if yeah. we don't do the things that are in the plan, yeah. uh -huh. if we if we don't commit to doing those things, uh -huh. and some of them are um, are pretty significant. Yes. Uh, and so if we don't do those things, then there's a it's not a chance; it's a sure thing uh -huh. mm -hmm. if, that we'll run out of water. Right. Can you share with us a couple of things that we need to be doing? Well, one is going to be is always using water efficiently. Uh huh. And. And we learned a lot, when I say we, I mean the people that live in this area learned a lot about using water efficiently during the droughts that we had in 2002, 2007. Mm -hmm. And we learned that, that our grass gets along just fine with a little less water. Mm -hmm. We learned that, uh, that, that water's valuable. And, and we learned to be, to be more efficient with it. And so as a result of that, the amount of water that each of our customers uses every day uh -huh. has dropped dramatically over the last 10 years. Uh -huh. We measure the amount of water that people use in terms of hundreds of cubic feet of water. It, it, we ought to measure it in gallons. We're, we're going to one of these days. Yeah, but, that's one of the projects I've worked on. Yeah. <laughs> Thank there, you, Regina. <laughs> making it simple for yes. us. <laughs> but a, a, a hundred cubic feet of water is 748 gallons. Uh -huh. So about 10 years ago, an average household in, in Charlotte would use about 11 of those hundred cubic feet right. units okay. of water in a month. Last year, they used less than seven. Huh. So it's not quite a 50% reduction, but, but it's, it's getting close. It's moving uh -huh. in that direction. Uh -huh. And so we believe that it's going to be important to keep pushing that number down. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And and several things contribute to that. More water efficient shower heads, plumbing fixtures, uh -huh. dishwashers, clothes washers, uh, and the fact that people are, are being um, more frugal with how they water their grass and their mm -hmm. outdoor water usage. Mm -hmm. So so that's a that's an important trend and that's one of the most important things that we're going to need to do mm -hmm. to make the water supply last longer is use it more efficiently. Hmm. You know what, Barry and Regina, let's take a quick break. When we come back, I want to ask you some more questions about water. Okay. Things that people probably don't even know. Okay? Sure. Sounds good. But it would be safe to keep your distance until the oh, secret that make you smile. Mm -hmm. Remind the sources say that chicken mm -hmm. soup has proved it's found their way out of this Getting closer to nature can get you closer to your family. Go to discovertheforest.org. Every book is an adventure waiting to come to life. Visit new worlds. Encounter new friends and discover the power of reading. Go to read.gov to read A Princess of Mars, the first novel to feature John Carter. A new world awaits. Read. 
Hi, welcome back to Better You. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Barry and Regina, and we're just talking about water. And I have learned so much just from the first few minutes of talking to you about it. I did not realize all the things that you had mentioned that there's a chance we may run out of water if we don't do what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. But we're working on improving that, right? That's correct. That's correct. So let me just ask you some other things about water. You said it comes from the Catawba River, mostly Mountain mm -hmm. Island Lake. Mm -hmm. How do you take care of those streams to make sure that it's clean? Well, the take care of the streams is not really Charlotte McMurray Utility Department's ah. uh, prayer view. Uh, we work in conjunction with stormwater services, and uh -huh. stormwater services really works more directly with the streams. But we work together to, to make sure that um, we, we take care of and, and be good stewards of the water oh. uh, sources. And one of the principles of, of providing good, clean drinking water uh -huh. is to start with good, clean water to begin with. Right. And so the, it's easier to keep it clean than it is to uh -huh. clean it up after it gets dirty. Uh -huh. And so the, the work that Regina described that, that city and county stormwater services are doing to protect the streams is really important. Hmm. So whenever the water comes through, I guess, your plant, what is the process of cleaning it to making sure it's safe for us to use? It's, it's really not as complicated as people might imagine. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. <laughs> okay. It, but, but one thing that, <laughs> one common misconception that a lot of people have about water treatment uh -huh. is, is that water plants are not magic. Water plants don't make anything disappear. Mm -hmm. Everything that goes into the water plant comes out of the water plant. Mm -hmm. And so okay. what the water plant really does is separates the good things from the bad things. Uh -huh. And turns the, turns, turns, tries to turn both of those things into productive um, and, and usable items. Uh -huh. So, so we we start with water from the river, and it's water and dirt. It's primarily what it is. Mm -hmm. And so we have to separate that. And we have some mm -hmm. physical processes and some chemical processes that we use to clean it up and to disinfect it so that it's safe for people to drink. Huh. And then the the part that comes out of that is the dirt. It's the bad stuff that comes out of the water. Uh -huh. And so we we also clean that up so uh -huh. we can return it to the environment so that it can be reused and, and beneficial. Hmm. But it's a, it's a real common misconception. Well, you just send it to the treatment plant and, and they clean it up good. and they're all as well. <laughs> yeah, but that's this, what I thought too. Yeah, but yeah. <laughs> and it's an even more important concept at the wastewater plants. Uh -huh. When you think about how dirty the, the water is when it comes into the wastewater treatment plants. Okay. And again, we're gonna put it into the mm -hmm. stream. That's our, our goal is to return it to the environment. Mm -hmm. But we have to separate the components. So we have to get the, have to take the water out of the dirt and the dirt out of the water and make them both uh, safe and clean and, and in the right condition to right. return to the environment. What we really want to say to people is that we, we're beneficial recyclers. That's really what our job is. Our oh. job is really to allow you to use the water and then return the water just as you, uh, just as we took it, uh, took it out of the stream back. Uh -huh. um, so, and that's our primary goal. The water cycle is we uh, take it out, we clean it up, we give it to you to use uh -huh. um, as drinking water. Mm -hmm. You use it, you return it to us as wastewater, we clean it back up, we return beneficially return and recycle the solid part to uh -huh. the land and the uh, water part back to the streams. You said that sounds simple, but that sounds kind of complex too. <laughs> but you know, it takes, it takes really dedicated people to do that uh -huh. because if you think about it, when you wake up at two o'clock in the morning and need to go get a drink of water, you don't have to worry about whether there's anybody at the water plant. In other words, yeah. when you turn the faucet on, the water comes out. Uh -huh. And so we have folks working 24-7, Christmas Day, their birthday, Every day. Really? 2 o'clock on Christmas morning. I mean, it's, it's a 24-7 operation. The water yeah. never stops flowing. The wastewater never stops coming into the wastewater treatment plants. And so it's a 24-7 job. When, when water mains break, we're out there fixing them, uh, huh. whether it's cold or hot or raining or snowing. Our guys are out there. We have, you ask us how many employees we have, 760, and they are really yeah. dedicated, excellent employees. They are, they are, um, they do a great job, very committed to what they do. Huh. So the people that work at the water treatment plant and the waste treatment plant, are they engineers or chemists or both? 
it, all of the above. All of the above. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. We 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 just both happen to be engineers, uh -huh. but that's just happenstance. But um, uh, as far as our employees go, we employ all types of people, uh -huh. and we and we welcome all types of people to join us too uh -huh. and help take care of our community resource with the uh -huh. water. Um, we have uh, laboratory services, so we use lab analysts. We have an engineering division, so we use engineers. We have a customer service division, so we need customer service representatives. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. um, we have um, safety uh, staff. We have a communication staff. So we need Ooh. all of those people because we are a 24-7 operation and because uh, most importantly, we want to have clean water for a healthy community and we uh -huh. want to be there um, for our community. So this sounds like a small army of people. Help. There's an old saying about it takes a village. It yes. really, it really yeah. does to run yes. this utility. Yeah. Like Regina said, we we have people that are driving dump trucks and we have PhDs working in laboratories. So that's right. And huh. everything in between, you know. So it's a and and every one of them is is committed and dedicated and and well trained and, uh -huh. and do excellent work. I know that you are engineers, but what are some of the chemicals that go inside the water? Would you happen to know? I would, and there aren't very many. No. Oh, really? There aren't there are very, very many. Few. Water, uh, you, one of the other premises of water treatment is, is don't put anything in you don't have to. Uh -huh. okay? That's exactly because right. Because everything you put into the water tends to try to react with everything else that's in there. Uh -huh. So, so um, there are really very few chemicals. We use uh, a chemical that's called alum. The common name of it is alum. Uh -huh. And it's also a chemical that's used to make pickles. Mm -hmm. Okay, And so we hmm. use that, and what it does is it helps the little tiny particles of dirt that are in the water stick together uh -huh. because it's easier to get big particles out of the water than it is little particles. That's so let's true. turn the little ones into big ones, okay? Uh -huh. And so then we let that settle. And we um, we add lime, uh -huh. not, not mm -hmm. the juice, but the, the, the powder. Okay? <laughs> we, not making That's margaritas. Good. Not making margaritas here. <laughs> so we add we add some lime to adjust the pH of the water so uh -huh. it doesn't corrode the pipes when we send it out into the system. Uh -huh. We add a little bit of powdered activated carbon in case there's any taste or odor in the in the water from the lake. The uh -huh. powdered activated carbon helps absorb that and get it out of the water. Uh -huh. And we use chlorine to disinfect. Uh -huh. um, that's pretty much it in terms of water treatment. There's one other chemical that we add that really has nothing to do with water treatment, uh -huh. but it's there to protect people's teeth. Mm -hmm. And it's fluoride. Okay. And, oh. and I will tell you that there's some controversy around fluoride and um, there's a lot of information uh, out on the internet and in different sources about the benefits of fluoride as well as some of the risk of fluoride. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's, as a lot of science, there are, are differences of opinion. Of course. But, but the, the prevailing, widely prevailing um, opinion uh -huh. uh, of, of the medical experts, the dental experts across the country is, is that fluoride is a really good thing and that uh -huh. it prevents tooth decay in a, in a very significant and a very positive way. Mm -hmm. And so many, many, many cities across the country fluoridate their drinking water to help protect mm -hmm. their residents' teeth. And so we're one of those, those communities mm -hmm. that do that. You know, I was just sitting here thinking about something. Why is it that when you go to another city or a town, the water tastes different from Charlotte? Are they adding <laughs> something different? Well, uh, a lot of taste is about the source water. Mm -hmm. So where you start is it, it, it kind of indicates where you end with the uh -huh. taste. Um, and a lot, a lot of taste is about um, probably trace metals or trace minerals in the water. Uh -huh. So what you're experiencing may just be based on the source water that the water treatment in that town started with. Ah. Um, uh, typically, uh, in historically, water treatment from town to town is not that different. You okay. know? It's really not. And so uh, a lot of what you might taste is uh, trace is trace minerals that come from the source itself one of the one of the big differences that sometimes imparts a different taste is whether the water comes from a surface water source like a, mm -hmm. a river or a lake like uh -huh. ours does or whether it comes from a well because particularly some of the smaller towns and even some large cities mm -hmm. use well water they use water you know from underground sources and it okay. typically has more minerals in it and and starts with a different different taste and the treatment process for well water mm -hmm for groundwater is, is a little different than from surface water too. Mm -hmm. You know, I've always wondered why the water tastes different from one place to another. Mm -hmm. Because, and I guess that's it. Yeah. Right. So the well water is not like an old-fashioned well where you had to crank it up, is it? Um, not exactly. Not exactly. Oh. 
<laughs> but it's not that different, you know, in terms of the concept. The concept uh -huh. is very similar. Uh huh. Yeah. Instead of having to crank the handle or pump the pump, uh -huh. there's an electric pump that right. pumps the water out. But that's about the only difference. That's about the only difference. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, let's take a quick break, you guys. I want to ask you some other questions about okay. water. Thank you so much for coming because I'm learning so much <laughs> from you all. Thank you for having <laughs> us. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov. moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. Take time to be a dad today. Hi, welcome back to Betty. I'm your host, Cynthia Thompson. I'm here with Barry and with Regina. We're talking about the water that you drink every day and use for your cooking and cleaning and everything else. And man, have I learned a lot about water. But I want to ask you all some other questions that's in your area. Something that I've been curious about. In my neighborhood, I've seen them flushing water. Why do they do that, and is it necessary, and what does it do for our water mm -hmm. system? Uh, well, flushing is actually very necessary. We particularly flush in areas where we have what we call dead legs uh -huh. or stagnant water. Uh, we have to do it there because uh, water needs to continue to be moved and it uh -huh. needs to be used. Uh, we have an actual plan and a program around flushing, so it's not random, even though it may, <laughs> it may appear that way sometimes, but we actually plan that flushing. Uh, huh. We also, with the fire hydrants, um, the fire department regularly flushes those, so we, we plan flushing. Um, and it's not intended uh, to be occurring in order to cause a waste of water. Oh, so you work with the fire department whenever they flush the waters mm -hmm. out of those fire hydrants. Right. I always wondered about that. I view it as wasting water, but I see where it's needed now. Yes. We have to do it. Yes, we have to do it. And, and when the fire department's doing that, they're also being sure that the hydrant works properly uh -huh. and, and measuring the pressure and how much flow they can get out of it. In case they need huh. it during an emergency, they know what to expect. Hmm. And so you send some of your people out there to help the fire department when they do that? Or Gen they just generally, generally the fire department does, does ah, that yeah. part of it on their own. We, when there's a, when we're doing routine flushing for water quality, mm -hmm. that's usually our staff doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the fire department does, does their thing separate. But we're coordinated in terms of anything that we find wrong, we uh -huh. work to get it fixed. You know, I told a friend of mine that you guys were coming on my show. She wanted me to ask, why is it that, depending on where you live, the water pressure is low and sometimes it's high? Mm -hmm. Or can um, you even control that? Well, it's, it's controlled. Um, by the height of the water tanks, uh -huh. actually, mm -hmm. and by whether you live on a hill or in a valley. Oh, so yes. the water pressure varies across the system. That's another misconception that people have is, is that everybody has the same water pressure, but as, you, as your neighbor has discovered, uh -huh. that's not true. And the people who live higher up on the hill, the top of a hill, uh -huh. or on higher ground will have lower water pressure than people who live at the bottom of the hill mm -hmm. or down by a creek. Uh -huh. So so the the um, the way a water plant works is we pump the water out into the system and it's kind of like pumping up an inner tube. Mm -hmm. if, it, if you have an inner tube and there are no holes in it and you keep pumping and pumping and pumping, it'll pop. So the same thing will happen in the water system. If we keep pumping water in and there's none going out uh -huh. or there's less going out than we're putting in, we'll start breaking pipes. So we don't want to do that. Uh, right. So the water tanks give us sort of a, a wide spot in the pipe. Uh -huh. So if the people aren't using as much water as we're pumping, it goes into the tanks. Uh -huh. And then when they're using more than we're pumping, it comes back out of the tanks. But the, oh. that vertical distance between the house and the water level in those tanks really determines the water pressure that people see in the system. I think I understand what you're saying. No, we, we're using gravity. Yeah. Exactly. Maybe, maybe that's yeah. the best way to yeah, put it. Okay. And water runs downhill. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so we, we have our tanks uh, up at the yes. top of the hill, uh -huh. and we send water down the hill to your house. And people oh. who are at different spots on the hill 
see different, different pressure. Water pressure. Oh, okay. But Thank generally, you, <laughs> generally speaking, generally speaking, the, the the water pressures in our system will range from about 35 or 40 pounds uh -huh. per square inch mm -hmm. up to as much as about 120 or uh -huh. 130 pounds per square inch. So is that why in those small towns when you're going on a road trip you see the water towers? Is that why? Right, That's and we have the same yes. thing. We have oh, water we towers. Yes. Yeah, yeah. We Where is it? Um, well, we well, have we have a ones. number of them. <laughs> yeah. Really? And they're located across the county. They're on. Mm -hmm. Strategic locations. Uh -huh. right. They're generally on tops of hills. Yeah, I have never seen one here in the Charlotte area. Um, Look around, you'll see them. Yeah, one of the ones that huh. most people are familiar with is going to be what we call the vest uh -huh. uh, right. tank, and that's the one you'll see as you drive along Brookshire, uh -huh. going back and forth to work in the morning for people who work downtown. It's at Brookshire and Beatty's Ford Road. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. One last question for you guys: Are we prepared for a terrorist attack if a terrorist decides to poison our water mm -hmm. system? Do we have a plan in place if by chance that were to ever happen? There are a number of things that can threaten a water system. Mm -hmm. And we try to be prepared for as many of them as we possibly can. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. One thing that, that folks need to remember though is water plants are designed to take bad things out of water. Uh -huh. You don't go to the lake and drink the water because why? because you it's think dirty. there's something in there that's gonna make you sick, right? Yeah. But after it goes through the water plant, it's perfectly safe. Uh -huh. So the water plants take care of biological contaminants every mm -hmm. day. That's what they do. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not to say that they're 100% that they're foolproof, uh -huh. but they do a, a really good job and they do, they, the, folks should feel safe drinking their water. Mm -hmm. yes. And we have measures in place that we won't talk about a whole lot okay. about uh, protecting the water supply source, mm -hmm. about protecting the, the system, the plants, the pipes, and, and the water as it goes out into the system. Hmm. We take water samples every day out uh -huh, in okay. the system, not just at the plant, but we go out into the community at huh. the ends of the pipes, in the middles of the pipes, and, and all through we and, and collect water samples and test them to be sure that they're safe and, and meet all the standards. Wow, you all have really opened my eyes to how we take care of our water and make it safe for us. But you know what? Just in case we miss something that my viewers may want to ask you all, how can mm -hmm. they reach you? Uh, the best way to uh, get obtain information about your water system is to go on the website, charmec.org. Uh -huh. That's C-H-A-R-M-E-C-K dot org. Uh -huh. And just look for uh, either utilities, or Charlotte utilities, or just water. You can enter in water. any of those quests, any of those things <laughs> in the search box, right. and you'll find us. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> and I want to thank you all for joining me again. Unfortunately, I am out of time. I had more questions for you, but we did not get to them. You'll have to come back again. Okay. You promise thank you, you will? Yes, we will. we will do that. And I want to thank each and every one of you for joining me here on Better You every Wednesday night at 6 p.m. here on Public Access 21. Thank you.